welcome back to Sailing Vessel. Hey, hey, day, day. On the hard, in the yard, getting boat work done. You might ask, how do you get something that looks like this, that has been attacked by marine life for many years and has not had a good paint job in a while, to look like this? First, you power wash the bottom, which was included in the haul out. Then you pay someone to do all the sanding, that grit work, but then you run into problems. So we're kind of under a time crunch. Got only two weeks for this boat to be on the hard and get a bottom job done. And the weather is something we have to work around. And our sander gives out. Hmm. Walking towards the bike rack thinking I'd have to bicycle six miles to Home Depot and I got lucky. When I was mentally preparing myself for the 45 minute ride uh, to exchange the orbital sander as I was securing it in the basket with a bungee cord, I hear the two men talking on the catamaran next to me. Go to Home Depot and get a caulking gun. My ears perked up. When the young man dismounted, I said, I overheard you say you were going to Home Depot. I was about to cycle there to exchange this. I said, I can give you a ride. Kyle was his name. He kindly drove me and let me hitch a ride. Um, he is helping his brother work on his parents' cat catamaran. They will be he heading to Maine with it. So I got back with the replacement orbital sander, which we had originally purchased at the Home Depot in Norman. So I was really happy that the one in uh, Annapolis honored the exchange so Nate uh, was able to get, as you can see in this video strip, um, a good majority of it sanded and I'm just doing the hand sanding of the areas, the crooks, that the orbital sander cannot get into. was bronze when it was on the boat. Chris takes it off and now you can tell. Three days later, Nate was nearly finished with the sanding and we had another problem. We have filled bags and bags of the vacuum with this dust from the sanding. It's the literal paint and we need more bags and filters. This just doesn't have enough room. <laughs> You want me to get one of the garbage bag? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> get away. Yeah. I cannot believe that much has come off that boat already. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh. Right on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> this time I wasn't so lucky to grab a w ride, so I actually had a bicycle the six miles to the Home Depot, swung around and went to Advanced Auto Parts also to look for a part. I have gotten pretty swift about how I go about shopping, using a bicycle, getting around Annapolis, and loading up in a backpack and and bungee cords and, and in the crate. <laughs> so back on task. Nate was able to finish up all the sanding uh, below the water line. Now I'm working above the water line to get it all cleaned up. This is the white gel cupped. And uh, our plan was to, after getting it all cleaned up, get it uh, a bit buffed and waxed, but we never got to that. Um, you will see later that um, Without doing that, this task is pretty much pointless. But um, the yellowish, orangish, brownish sort of tones that start to happen on the gel coat of these boats, I'm not sure how much of it is. The water has is just really dirty, different kinds of algae, or even rust with the different boats in the marina sitting around. 
So um, a lot of sailors use some kind of acid. Here I am using a, um, a, a bit of a little bit of rust off and uh, it's diluted. I don't need it real strong but for the sake of not getting it in my eyes or breathing it in or getting it on my lips or and having too much of that acid, any acid really touching my skin, you can see I'm wearing a lot of protective gear. All right, it's just after 8 a.m. I heard the national anthem play at a nearby station and um, I've been up and out here at, since 7 a.m. trying to get the adhesive off from the previous tape that was put on before sanding. Nate's done a great job sanding. Got sanding done on the whole boat and rudders. Um, and then yesterday I was cleaning off the white part, making sure it was not so yellowy. Did all the cleaning on the inside of the pontoons and I still have to get that done on the outside. Once we get this clean, get the goo off, retape, then we'll be ready to paint. Now soft sanding the, the epoxy spots. Just taking the, the gloss out of it. But you yeah, know, for paint. if I covered up a high spot, the high spot just comes back out. Yeah. It is April 19th, Monday, a week down in dry dock. And um, it is pouring down rain today, so won't be painting. Um, but had it all sanded and cleaned, epoxied places, sanded again, cleaned, um, got it all prepped, and then we're just not ready to paint. So, hoping for a dry day tomorrow to do first coat, and another dry day this week to do second coat. Uh, meanwhile, the whole place is a mess. Tools and parts and everything everywhere. Um, but since it's a rainy day, I decided to make some chocolate chip cookies. We've just been watching a little show and um, relaxing, taking a break. It's been a hectic, hectic week. Nate is no longer with us. Um, we, we got done the, the biggest part to make sure we stay on schedule. So thank, grateful for his help. Um, but now Chris and I have to handle the rest. So today with the better weather, we are doing the final wipe down and we will begin painting. So it is Tuesday, April 20th, and it's supposed to be sunny all day. And a uh, high of 70, low of 52. We have to keep the temperature above 50 degrees, and even the surface of the boat should be above 50 degrees as we apply the paint and let it cure. Even on the paint can, we can't maintain 50 degrees temperature. It says we need to let it dry for 36 hours. Okay. So right now, what are you wiping it down with? The paint solvent that is for that paint. It's supposed to remove any chemicals and debris that that paint won't stick to. Um, but to me, it just seems to be rubbing off the old paint. <laughs> the bottom, the, yeah. I don't know how much just didn't get washed off or wiped off before.
Parkside pontoon painted with its second coat of flavor. Now we gotta work on the starboard side. With the days of rain, the problem we have is I believe it's the gel coat that kind of washes away a bit and leaves these streaks. We scrubbed it as much as we could and uh, we'll just have to paint over it and hope that now the next couple of days will be sunny and dry so we won't have streaks. So a few lessons learned. Part of the problem with doing this in the spring is all the pollen and everything else that is coming off the trees and the wind is blowing in. So maybe that's why people try to do it early fall before things really start falling and, and there's not as much debris in the air. So four cans was exactly enough to do two coats on this catamaran, two foot pontoons. I have blue freckles. <laughs> Even after a long day of work in this long week and a half, Chris helped out a woman change the tire on her car. week ago we did the second coat of bottom paint and then two days later we were launched that is when the Fort Annapolis had put the straps on and there's pins that hold the top straps to the bottom strap and it was it looks like it was right here and the strap came down under the boat and you can see where even though there were two good cure days that that took off some of the bottom paint and since the boat has been in the water five days. Chris decided to take the bootstripe off, something we've been talking about, finally just did it. 